Hey guys, we're getting ready to start back on the next part for the parking attachment and that's going to be this threaded rod right here. So I'm going to use a piece of inch and a half stress proof rod. I need to get a piece cut off and we're going to use the Victor lathe to machine this, turn it down, thread it, and go over to the mill and we'll use the mill to machine the hex in it. But uh, first I'd like to explain this a little bit more in depth uh, with the camera a little closer to the part. So I think I'm going to bring the parking attachment right here where we got a little bit more light and I'm going to try to explain how all this is uh, put together there on on camera there and try to hopefully help everybody understand how these parts actually work together okay okay hopefully that's providing a nice clear shot for you to see and first of all I want to point out that we've had a lot of guys comment on hey is that thing upside down no, it's not upside down. This is exactly how it was made, how it was manufactured, and in the proper way to install it. And one of the reasons behind it being like this, you have a gap here, and that's for this nut here actually goes up in there. And once it's swung in place, I'm going to move this out of the way just so you can see. That's what this counterbore right here is for. This nut, once it's installed, let me move these out of the way. I'll tell you about those in a minute. See, this is gonna, this rod is going to be through here like this. And this nut will be down here, and you actually lock it in place right there. And then that counterbore actually is to allow this to not be able to come out at all. Okay? So, here is the factory nuts that was on this factory-made piece. And you see one is beveled. It looks like a lug nut. Everybody knows what a lug nut is, right, for a wheel on your car. And it fits in this pocket right here. This bevel that was machined in here that John did, this is where this nut fits. And I'm going to go ahead and screw it onto the rod here so you can see. Get it up a little ways. That's to allow a little bit of movement. This doesn't look like a lot of movement here, but when you've got a big vertical head swinging on this thing, that's a lot of movement. And that's to allow you to move the head around and get that vertical head positioned where it needs to be and slide up on the overarms and locked into place. So this allows a little bit of swinging movement so you can get the alignment done the way you need. All right, this other nut here is just simply a lock nut that will go on top that will lock these two together. And in addition to that, you have a hole that's drilled here that I'm assuming is going to be for a pin. We can just put a roll pin there, and that is to uh, keep these nuts from backing off at all. All right, <clears throat> so what I have found that I can use, I have talked about maybe trying to just buy these, just use regular manufactured hex nuts. Now this is a nice heavy-duty hex nut right here. In my little rotary bin over there, I've got a bin full of old three-quarter ten bronze nuts. We got quite a few of these things, and they're fully machined out of look like hex bar. And I'm going to use these for this part right here. So one of these, what I'm going to do is set it up, and I'm going to machine the taper on it or the bevel so that it will fit down in this bevel pocket right there and then will you have another one as the lock nut and then we'll have one as this lower lock nut that will fit up in there it's the exact same size as the factory steel nut right here but what I want to do is actually machine a little bit more of a register on the bottom right here and relieve some of those points so that it's not so close to this counter bore here and have it a little bit more rounded off just a little you know a little step there about an eighth of an inch or so to clear this right here and I'm going to clean them up too we've got some of that uh, let's see what this is, is that <clears throat> some of that flitzed brass and copper tarnish remover and I actually sprayed a little bit of that on one of these nuts looks like this one right here just for a minute and it does work pretty good so we're going to get these things cleaned up so that they look a little better I'll probably kind of buff the outside so that they look pretty and I think that's about it so but we're going to go ahead and get this completed and try to get the nut machined and cleaned up too okay so let's go ahead and get started on it Uh, we're 
we're going to go ahead and get, get one side of this indicated and faced off. About a thou, good enough for facing. All right, so we're going to turn and finish this side first, and that total length. It's five and five sixteenths. So I'm gonna pull this out about six inches. That's why I faced it first, because I got a lot of stick out there. So we're just gonna pull that out about there. And we'll go ahead and re-indicate this. And once we get it indicated, then I'll machine the uh, center in the end of it to hold it, then we'll turn it. And it should hold pretty square. Well, look at that. <laughs> Look at that, Tom. Two thousands. Let's see. Oh. Still about a thousandths out. Not perfectly round either. So that would have been a quick one, huh? <laughs> I need to get a little bit more torque on these jaws, though. That's going to be plenty for what we're doing and you know I can come down here and and check this in but it's it's not really going to be that big of a deal because we're turning it down you can see we got about five six about six thousands run out we're going to leave that alone though because that'll all be turned so I'm going to turn to finish this side and it's a standard size which is three quarter well, after I finish this size, I'm going to dismount the four jaw. I'm going to put my collet chuck on, and then we'll hold this part of the shaft in a collet to finish this in here. All right, as I said, our shoulder length is going to be five and five sixteenths, and I've used my hook scale to get my tool set to where I want it. I've got me a zero set here, and I've already uh, drilled me a center hole in the end. I'm just going to put me a little scratch there to uh, remind myself where we're about to stop at. So the tool we're going to use today is this DNMG style of insert. This, uh, this particular one is a 431. Yes, that's going to be a 431, but here's a uh, I'll throw it up on screen for you. This is an Ingersoll DNMG 431. It is the uh, VF style of insert. They do they do a good job of like free cutting. The way that they're formed, it has a positive cut to it. So let's see how it does on the stress proof. I, I've never actually used these on stress proof. I'm sure it'll do pretty good, but let's let's find out. We're going to try an eighth of an inch pass, see how it reacts. Beautiful, look at that. I love how that just, it just curls the strip, the, uh, the chip straight on over. In case you guys are wondering, we're running 600 RPM and our feed, I'm say I'm on B1, 11.6 thousandths per revolution. So basically like a 12 thousandths feed rate.
this cut here bring us down to seven eighths. So we got one, we got another eighth of an inch to come down. We'll go ahead and mic it after this cut and we'll see how we're looking. Alrighty, 876. That's 877. All right, so I'm getting one thousandths taper through here. I'm going to take half that, and we're going to finish that on uh, you know three quarters of an inch. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to reduce it a few thousandths for because this is all mainly going to be threaded here. So I'm just going to split it. We're going to take a sixteenth. I've sped the RPM up to seven hundred, and I'm slowed the feed rate down to five thousandths. One thing I'll point out real quick is this uh, down here, I have not finished the shoulder yet. Whenever I get through uh, finishing this diameter, I'm gonna swap out that insert to a 432 and put that radius in that corner right there. Okay, that last cut I dialed in 65 thousandths. So we'll take what's left right here. Should be about equal to that, so I'm at I'm at 810. I'm at 811 there. So I'm still getting a thou taper. That's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and dial in what I need. So that's going to be 60 plus about 4. So let's go 64 on the dial and we're going to leave it there. If you look at my indicator, you can see I'm not quite to the uh, zero point that I wanted, and that's okay. I'm going to change that insert out and put a, a, a just a small radius in that corner right there. So let me see if I hit my size. I was shooting for about uh, 746, and that's what I got, 746. Should be about 747 right here. And it is. So let me swap this out for a um, 432 radius and we'll finish this corner. Alright, we got our 432 uh, tool in there. Let me see if I can get you a shot of that. If you'll notice the point of the tool, we've got a slightly larger radius there. come in here and just kind of establish a stop point all right we got a zero there All right, there we got a, a blended radius on the corner there. Now I want to put an undercut using, I'm going to use a high speed blade with a radius machined on the end of the blade. So the factory, you know, they just come up and cut it. Looks like they use the die, but I like to use a radius undercut there, which is three quarters. Uh, we'll just go ahead and make it five eighths. So I'll just bring my tool up to five eighths right there, the edge of the tool, and then we'll cut us a uh, undercut right there. And let me go see what the double depth of the thread is. We're going to be cutting a three quarter ten. All right, so you can just look at your little fishtail gauges right here. You know, thread gauge tells you your double depth there. So for a 10, it says 130 thousandths. 
So that's what I'm going to take. Slow it down some here. I already got my tool set on center. I did that off camera before I started there. I'm just going to kind of touch off here. Set my zero. Let's see how it does. There's 130 right there. I'm going to move over about half the width of the tool. I'm going to go back in again. Now that I got to the bottom, I'm just going to move it back and forth here to clean it up. Use my compound to back the tool out. Cut a 30 degree angle there. Okay. And before I cut you off, let's go ahead and drop in this tool here. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of I'm gonna break that edge off for handling purposes. And we're going to chamfer the end of the rod here. All right, so now we're going to do some threading. All right, I think we're ready to thread. I went ahead and cleaned the three nuts off. I haven't buffed them or anything, but I sprayed them with the tarnish remover and then rinsed them in water. I'm hoping that the threads are cleaned out on the inside by rinsing them with water there, but. I may end up having to run a tap through them. I'm not sure yet. I was trying to avoid having to tap them. So the threading tool I'm going to use, just drop my pitch gauge down here in the floor. Uh, here's the other thing. Make sure you got your, make sure you got a pitch gauge so you can double check your thread. We're cutting a 10 pitch. That's a national course for three quarter. We're going to use a TNMC 32 I'm sorry. No, TNMC 43NV is the threading insert. This is sort of old school now, uh, more of a older style of threading threading tool. But I still have plenty of those inserts around my shop here, so I'm going to be using them. And I do need to set the uh, center height on this, so. going to run it up and I'm getting down here to the center and I'm looking at it okay that looks nice lock the uh, lock nut there all right let's see we'll start off with about 210 I may kick it up from there So I'm going to set my compound on zero. And then we're going to run our... Okay, so I'm going to set my cross, cross slide on zero. Now I'm running up with the compound set at 30 degrees or 29 and a half actually. Just going to touch the tool. I'm going to set the zero on the compound. So, cross slide set at zero, compound set at zero. We do our in feed with this because you're following the shape of that threading insert. You're going in at an angle, so you're actually feeding on one side of the tool, not both sides. If you was to feed in with this straight in, then you're going to be feeding into both sides of that threading tool there. So we're going to use the compound to feed 30 degrees in, cut on one side of the tool. Let's go ahead and make a scratch pass with a couple thousandths in feet here. 
I uh, need to set the machine real quick here. I'm looking for a 10 BD3. BD3, all right. So we're going to double check it with our pitch gauge. And that looks like 10 threads per inch there. So we'll give you a couple shots uh, cutting thread here. I know you guys like to see what I'm doing, so I'll, I'll move the camera and give you a different angle also that you can see how I'm running the machine. Go ahead and feed in some and engage the half nuts again. One of the reasons I like that undercut there is so you can kind of calmly stop the machine, back the tool out, and then come back and reset. So you go back into your zero, we're going to make another cut, engage the half nut. Now this is an even number thread, so I'm engaging on just a, uh, any of the line that I see there on the dial I'm engaging on. Alright, I think I want to try speeding it up here and thread it a little faster than I'm doing. That's 210. Let's go to 350. Let's see how that looks. That's looking a little better. Gotta get you a, a little live action shot right here. So go back in to zero on the cross slide and we're going to be going to about 75,000 steep on this uh, compound here. I'm at 55, I'll take another 10,000 here. Still got a little ways to go on my uh, compound for my in feed. I'm gonna go ahead and start checking this. I, I just want to kind of thread it to where it fits. So, yeah, still tight. Go back in here and make a couple more passes. Go ahead and check it there. I do need to give the uh, thread a little file where it rolls that edge over. So you can see we're getting we're getting there. But I need to take a little more because it's it's too tight. You know I'm having to really squeeze on it to get it to go on there. So we're just about where we want it. So let's come in for a spring pass and see what it does. You can see it's skimming a little bit, but I think I need a little more than that. So I'm backing out. I'm going to come back in here. I just don't think that's enough. I'm going to go ahead and take it into my 75 on the cross dial here, on the uh, compound I mean.
I'm going to take one more spring pass. Got my smooth file. Just knocking the top of the threads off there. Getting rid of any burrs. All right, let's try them now. Well, I can see that they, uh, whoever manufactured them didn't, <laughs> they're not exactly square to the face. You can see a little wobble there, but now that's a good fit though. It's a good tight fit on them threads. Let's try the other two. That one's a little more snug. It may have, may have had a little bit of dust in the thread still. Yeah, we're good. We're good. That one's a wobble. This one's pretty. This one in the center is running nice and true on those threads. This one's running nice and true too. Now this one got a little wobble to it. So what I want to do is I want to separate that one. I'm going to use this one. It really doesn't matter, I guess really doesn't matter but I'm going to use this on this end here where it's going to lock down onto the, uh, the the parking attachment and then since this one's wobbling here and I'm going to machine one anyway I'm going to use this one that's going to be up here on this side of the uh, that's going to have the conical seat machined on it we'll use that one for that there so I'm going to take it off and just put me a little X on it so I remember Now that I know that it's finished off, I'm going to come back in here and file this last thread. It's got a roughness uh, and a sharp edge on it, and so does the very first one there. So I want to buff that and give it a little polish. This uh, corner where the radius is is real sharp. back edge of the file there to get that corner right here All right, that's softened up and that's softened up you can use some of this it's all warm paper just to kind of brighten it up a little bit blend it And that's it. This side is done.